Welcome viewers to our deep dive into the world of ultrasonography. Today, we unravel the complexities of pyosalpinx, a severe form of pelvic inflammatory disease, PID, and delve into its differential diagnoses, focusing on the critical ultrasonographic findings that aid in distinguishing pyosalpinx from other conditions. 35-year-old woman experiencing severe pelvic pain, fever, and elevated white blood cell count pointing towards a classic presentation of PID. PID encompasses a spectrum of inflammatory disorders of the female upper genital tract. One of the most serious complications of untreated PID is salpingitis, an infection and inflammation of the fallopian tubes which can lead to the formation of pyosalpings. This condition can cause peritoneal adhesions and significantly impact fertility. Having set the stage with the background of PID, let's focus on the ultrasonographic findings that highlight the features of pyosalpings. The ultrasound of our patient revealed two prominent cystic structures adjacent to the uterus, one located in the right adnexal region, and the other in the left. These structures are characterized by their complex nature, featuring incomplete septations, thickened walls, and contents that appear echogenic due to the presence of thick fluid. Upon closer examination, these cystic formations exhibit a tortuous, serpentine configuration akin to coiled tubes. This, along with their separation from the ovaries, leads us to the diagnosis of pyosalpinx. Fallopian tubes distended with pus due to severe infection. The addition of color Doppler ultrasound provides further insights, revealing increased vascularity around these tubal structures. This finding is indicative of significant inflammation, a hallmark of pyosalpinx in the context of PID. Having observed these distinctive features of pyosalpinx, it's imperative we now consider the differential diagnoses to ensure a comprehensive evaluation. In this case, we observed an ovarian cyst in the adnexal region with minimal hemorrhagic content, posing a distinct diagnostic challenge. Its location, notably farther from the uterus along with its thin walls, more rounded shape contrasting with the tubular appearance of a pyosalpinx and the hemorrhagic content were key in differentiating it from the adjacent salpingitis. Now, I'll show you a more typical hemorrhagic cyst, highlighting its differences such as multiple complete thin septations which further underscore its distinct characteristics. Should the ultrasound reveal anechoic content within the tubal structures, we might lean towards a diagnosis of an uncomplicated hydrosalpinx, devoid of infectious complications. The presence of solid, vascularized portions within the cystic formations would necessitate further diagnostic exploration, possibly with MRI, to rule out neoplastic processes. In cases where there's unilateral tubal thickening, less cystic in nature, accompanied by a small nodular lesion with a central cystic area, it's essential to evaluate the beta-HCG levels. This is to consider or exclude an ectopic pregnancy from our differential given its clinical significance and the need for immediate management. In cases of simple hydrosalpinx presenting with acute, severe pelvic pain, one important differential diagnosis to keep in mind is fallopian tube torsion. Prompt recognition and treatment are crucial to prevent serious complications. Thank you for joining us in this detailed exploration of pyosalpinx and its differential diagnoses. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.